In meeting women, how can you be bold, yet respectful, and non-threatening, and cool, and fun, all at the same time? In this episode, we will take a look back at flirting history during a specific time frame, the late 1800s through around 1930, mostly in the United States and the UK. I want to focus on those places and that time frame because I think there are things we can learn, both of the good and the bad by doing so. We'll do this through the lens of looking at what were called acquaintance cards or flirting cards that were used for a portion of this time. We'll dive in after a quick word from our sponsor, me. Hi everyone, welcome to the Gentleman's Guide to Flirting. I am David, the author of the book of the same name, Gentleman's Guide to Flirting, available on Amazon.com. I am also your host and the exalted leader of the Gentleman's Guide to Flirting empire. You will be able to find this content on YouTube or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Thank you for joining. Let's get started. Welcome back, everyone. This is episode 11 of the Gentleman's Guide to Flirting, beaming to you from GGTF World Headquarters on September 29th, 2020. What we're going to do in this episode is get at a difficult topic that is relevant to today by taking a look at the history of flirting in the United States and the UK from around 1870 to 1930. I totally understand that that sounds nuts, but please bear with me. Sometimes things change a lot over time, and sometimes they change very little. And that could be a good thing or a bad thing. Let's take a look at what I mean. This one says, Unspoken love. Long have I loved, but some strange spell forbids my heart its tale to tell. Here, take this card and simply feel the love my lips dare not reveal. So bearing in mind the time frame here, when it was uh, not socially acceptable for a man to just walk up and approach a woman of reputation on the street in a public place, this doesn't sound too bad to me. The 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 uh, person who selected this card, it, it's got a respectful tone. It show, shows a little courage there, and I, I kind of like it. Let's see. Please send home that shirt you borrow. That's all that this one says on a plain frame. This one seems to imply, if I don't misunderstand it, something pretty forward that the uh, man is implying that he's already spent time with the woman and she borrowed a shirt after the activities were over and did not give it back. That is uh, pretty insulting either way and I think think this would have fallen flat in the time frame we're talking about 1870 to 1930 and I think it should have got you slapped and I hate it in every way and this is not something you want to do this one's a busy one it's got a lot on it let's see let's get acquainted my home is in heaven special attention paid to other fellows girls that is um, I, I failed to see where there's anything positive about that one. Special attention paid to other fellows' girls sounds like a recipe for getting into fights and you're telling the girl that you're giving the card to that you have a wondering eye. I'm having difficulty seeing how this particular phrase is an asset here on the card. Let's continue. I have no assistance, but deliver the goods myself. Hmm. Dealer in love, kisses, and up-to-date hugs. I like that one. That's kind of cute. Single, out for a good time, but lonesome. Single, out for a good time, but lonesome. That's not casting yourself on a very positive light. In the lower left of the card, my capital, $9,999,999 in my dreams. I don't recommend that you ever lead with your money, whether you're joking or not. Uh, so I don't, I'm not a fan of that part being on the card. And the last bit was sole owner of Lover's Lane. 
that's you know, a little bit of bragging, I guess. You know, we got to take into account that this was over a hundred years ago, so maybe uh, that was a good joke back then. Overall, I can give this card a very high marks because it's got two really bad things about it. Again, you don't lead with your money. And if you, whether you have it or you don't, don't bring it up. You got to sell yourself. You've got to be the guy that she wants to be with. The part about special attention paid to other fellows, girls, I just don't get. Um, I don't see any way that we're, where that's a good thing. Let's try another one. Oh, this one's pretty. Uh, it's got one, two, three, four uh, beautiful red images on kind of like a cream background. The wording is, fair one, gaze on this picture, then on that. Shall I be the proud bird who escorts you home tonight, or the forlorn chap who sits on the fence and sees you go by? Yours truly, and there's a place for you to sign. This is kind of nice. I mean, in the upper left, you show the gentleman doffing his cap, like greeting a lady in the most formal, polite way. Lower left is looks like a, a man comforting a woman, so just a little hug with a cupid statue nearby on the upper center there's a man and woman look, walking down the street or walking out a promenade it looks very good the upper right is kind of the problem one where they're talking about the forlorn chap the forlorn chap who sits on the fence and sees you go by there's a man sitting on a fence and his woman walking by um i, I like Everything about this card, except for the kind of threat that says, I'll sit on the fence and I'll watch it go by every day. <laughs> so, that sounds like a threat a little bit, but otherwise, this one's this one's gorgeous, and I think it cast the man in a very positive light, and I hope it worked out for the people who are handing out this card. Oh, these are great. These are wonderful. Um, this is a little, These aren't flirtation cards. These are kind of um, like instructions for different types of visual signaling for flirting that was um, commonplace back then near the upper left we've got whip flirtation it's got gosh at least a dozen rules for like what uh how you carry your buggy whip you're like back then this is before like uh cars were commonplace where they existed but you may be carrying around your your buggy whip uh in your hands like and holding it in different ways or different orientations or moving around a certain way uh, meant certain things, and I think that's very interesting. It's whip flirtation. Fan flirtation would be for the woman, I believe. And there's about 15 or 20 different signals here where the woman can indicate varying degrees of interest. Is she available? Is she open to a, an approach or some kind of flirtation? That's very interesting. And the center on the green card, handkerchief flirtation, similar to the fan flirtation, it gives a way to use a handkerchief as a sign to go give signals to others that are you single or not? And generally speaking, are you open to something? Do you like this person? Do you not? On the right hand side, we got window signaling and it's the same thing. That's, this is very interesting here. I've, I hadn't seen this before. This is very interesting. I'm glad this gentleman makes his collection available out on Flickr. What I have seen when I'm traveling around is in, even now, I've seen in some cultures they'll have certain signs. I uh, like. I, I recall traveling around in remote China, PRC China, and there they would have uh, festivals where single people could attend, and they would wear like a headband with little horns on it. Like if you had two little horns on the front, that's not a devil religious thing. It's just like horns, like animal horns, little tiny ones made out of paper. And if you had two horns in the front, it meant one thing. One horn on the back on the right meant something else. One horn on the back on the left meant another thing. And that's how you could, like, in a much simpler language, it wasn't, the rules weren't as complicated as what you see on screen here. The women wear those to indicate are they available or not? Are they about to get married? Do they want to get married? That kind of thing. I, it's you got a lot of those examples all over the world. And I think I might do that in another video later. Like, doing do a flirtation around the world video. But I think, still think it's interesting, just good for you know a giggle to go and see how things work in different parts of the world around how different societies and different cultures deal with this you know difficult issue where you can't be too aggressive as, as a man or a woman to to an, announce your availability and approach a potential mate to express your interest. You want to be you know kind of bold and courageous, but at the same time respectful, so you won't cause any conflicts, start a fight, uh, or make her feel unsafe. Let's see this one. Upper left, come girls, let's get acquainted. Love made on short notice. 
Give me a trial before going elsewhere. The name on the card is The Unknown Sheik. Wholesale dealer in loves, hugs, squeezes, and kisses. Office hours from 1 to 1. The number 1 to W-O-N. All my work guaranteed to bring results. No extra charge for night work. Hmm. Considering the time that this was, handing out this card makes you look like a piece of shit. The, uh, this was, um, awfully forward. If you didn't know this girl at all to be joking with her in this way, I think this one would have been a problem and coming at uh, a lady now with this kind of attitude, I think it'll get you discarded because it's, I don't want to say inappropriate, but it's, um, it's, it's putting sex up front. You're jumping ahead too quickly you got to build a little rapport, have a little bit of chemistry, be a little nicer to her, and don't make her feel threatened by some sex-obsessed maniac. I, I don't like this one at all. Don't, don't take any inspiration from this one, guys. This one, the image on the right there shows a young man holding a young lady's hand, and everything looks fine and dandy like that. Let's read it. In the good old summertime, will you promise to be mine? I'm a millionaire's only son, not married, but easily lassoed. Okay. The, the, in the good old summertime where you promised to be mine is sweet. It was lovely. It's a love, very lovely sentiment. I like it. But the other two pieces to trying to, when the guy's trying to sell himself, I'm a millionaire's only son, whether that's true or not, you're leading with your money, which you d definitely don't do. And by that, I mean, don't say, Hey, I'm wealthy. You should be with me. She should want to be with you because of who you are the your depth of character the quality of the person that you are and being financially stable or financially well off is just uh, you know kind of icing on the cake there another thing too when you're um offering that first date don't do anything expensive do something cheap do something free uh again uh, you, you don't want to lead with your money but also don't put too much money at risk because so often on that first date there's so such a problem with uh what's called flaking these days where girls agree to meet you, but then have a change of heart, which is, you know, it's totally, totally okay. But you, you don't want to go of, you don't want to have gone into your pocket for a lot of money for some expensive tickets or been committed to some expensive meal or show or a trip or something like that. Don't do that. Do something preferable, ideally totally free. Not, not because out of any kind of lack of respect for the girl, but just it's just good practice. Not married, but easily lassoed. Not married, but easily lassoed. Makes you sound desperate. That I don't, I don't think anybody would say that now these days, but not married, but easily lassoed does make you sound a little desperate. Makes you sound a lot desperate. So I, I wouldn't suggest that either. So this card, I can't have to give it the big old thumbs down. Ah, this one has a sort of Spartan simplicity to it. There's no there's no imagery or artwork on it whatsoever. It simply reads, Dear Miss, I'm just your size and complexion. I'm going in your direction. So if you have no objection, I'd like to be your protection. And there's room for the initials or I guess a name at the bottom there. I like simplicity. Simplicity is a good thing. The only thing that draws my eyes, I like to be your protection, which... And this day and age could be seen as, I guess, interpreted as a th threat. Like if she did, if she doesn't go along with this, there she will be unsafe. But I have to, you know, think again back to the time frame this card was um, in circulation. It wasn't safe to be on the street if you're a young woman. It wasn't safe to be on the street by yourself, oftentimes because of the prevalence of mashers and really aggressive uh, guys on the street, you know, grabbing your arm, you know, following you home. It's, you know, it's not, not like that's stopped now. Oh, this one's pretty too. It's got a picture of a carriage with a drawn by two horses and it's got a picture of a beautiful house. Let's see what this says. At the top, there's a miss and there's a space there to fill in her name. So that's good. You know, at least know what her name is. If the weather is fair on and there's a space for a date, a day, if the weather is fair on a certain day and nothing ill be tied and I have my, that's where the horse and carriages are, not the words, at your house, the picture of the house, will you go with, will you go with me to ride? 
If agreeable, retain this. If not, please return. You know, I was totally with this guy all the way up to that very last sentence. Basically, it says, Miss so-and-so, respectful way of addressing her, on the certain day, if everything is cool and the weather's nice, I'd like to take you for a carriage ride. That sounds like really nice. Except for the goddamn last piece. If agreeable, retain this. If not, please return. If you agree, keep the card and don't do anything. If not, you got to give it back. Give the card back. Which puts her in a pretty awkward spot. Um, if she doesn't, if she just tosses the card in the gutter in the trash, you're just going to show up at her house. And if she doesn't want to have anything to do with you, you she's still got to come back and make contact with you or send the card back through her intermediary. So that last sentence just plain sucks. Um, I, I think I would like it the other way around. If she was agreeable to the carriage ride, that she needs to take some sort of action to say, yes, I feel comfortable with you. Here's your card back. Yes, you may come on a certain date or and here's another alternative date. But this this last sentence is just, just crap. I don't like it. All right, here's another one. There's no artwork on this. That's it's just text. So in the center, center you have, will you, and it's not Y-O-U, it's just the letter, letter U, will you permit me to make your acquaintance without the formality of an introduction, question mark. And on the left-hand side, you get, it would not be proper on the right-hand side if you desire it very much. Holy crap, I love this. Will you permit me to make your acquaintance without the formality of an introduction? And remember, during this time of the like end of the of the Victorian era, and like right before and a little after World War One, it was um, in polite society you really weren't supposed to go up to women that you hadn't been introduced to. But this, I, I freaking like it. This is a, this is a card you would hand. There's no nothing really wrong with it. It's, it's saying, hey, I know. I was supposed to, we haven't been introduced and I'm sorry about that, but I still, I'm still interested in you anyway. And it gives her, you know, she could, it, it would not be proper to say no in a very nice way. If you desire it very much, this is awesome. I absolutely love this. Should you, you can almost use this today. Huh? This one is uh, in color and it's really pretty, uh, though it's just a simple, a uh, few words on it. We've got a lovely couch at our house. Just holds two. We've got a lovely couch at our house. Just holds two. And the picture, um, again, it's beautifully colored, but it shows a, a man and woman kissing on a like a love seat. And, and my my initial reaction when I look at this, this looks like like if they had had Tinder back in the 1870s, 1880s, 1890s, this would be the equivalent of the guy showing you a picture of himself with his six-pack and his erection and his tidy whitey underwear. This is too sexual. It's too upfront. I, I don't think this would have worked. And it's too, it's too, you go jump straight to sexual content. Think of it again to our time. Jump, if you jump straight to sexual content too early, a lot of ladies will be turned off. You got to build that chemistry first. You got to build a little bit of trust where she feels comfortable with you somewhat. You'll see, as you see in the book, I, I get to you know, in person meetings pretty quickly, but I get to in person meetings because I think it's a more efficient use of time. I urge you to not spend too much of your limited time with, you know, going through, you know, lots of ladies to find ones that are potential matches for you don't spend days online screening them don't spend a lot of time on dates for you know get to the point figure out if she's gonna if she meets your initial criteria but for heaven's sake don't jump straight to sexual material first because she, i think in many cases now she'll just push you right away you don't get friend zone or anything you're just going to be a no so I think this is an example of what not to do from our great, great, great grandfathers. Um, and there's still uh, some guys now that haven't learned this lesson. But, you know, we, we kind of cover down on this kind of stuff in the book. And, you know, we got the YouTube channel here in the podcast to talk about this stuff. So this one uh, is kind of plain. This has a frame around it. It says invitation card. Come and see our new lamp. You can turn it down so low that there is scarcely any light at all. P.S. Our sofa just holds two. 
There is nothing to like about this. This basically says you can come over to my house. I got a lamp that I can adjust down. We can sit there on the sofa and make her in the dark. This makes you look like a total piece of shit. You're, you're starting off with, I'm going to basically be all handsy and gropey and not expect sex. And um, that's totally the wrong look. So this one's no good at all. Let's see. Here's another one from Mr. James L. Gallus, Callus, who is a kissing rogue, a kissing rogue, kissing our main specialty, hugging a sideline, office hours 1 p.m. to 4 a.m. He offers very generous hours, and his address he gives is Hug Tight Lane in Squeezemburg. <laughs> so I think I'm liking Mr. James Gallus, the kissing rogue. He sounds pretty playful. I'm not sure that this would have been warmly received by everyone at his time, but I think it's cute enough. And Mr. Gallus, I think, would have had some success even now with his uh, kind of cute sense of humor. He's getting too um, physically attractive to you without being coarse or rude about expressing it. I think it's. I think this one's pretty good. This noble youth, so lean and wan, was once as proud as any man his generous heart so full of glee is smashed and full of misery he bought her candy nuts and clothes took took her to all the circus shows he suffers much tell why who can she ran away with another man this would be an interesting poem outside of this but this is a invitation card this is a, a like an acquaintance card a flirting card the image on it shows like kind of like a forlorn skinny unhappy hunched over dude and there's nothing about this i like there's no ask there's no like what is this the guy's showing no com I, my problems are from the from the perspective of the book this guy's showing no confidence at all if this was targeted at some woman who he sees with another guy now and he's upset that she went with somebody else he shouldn't be handing her this card man he should move immediately on to the next, you know, one, two, three, four, ten. I wish I had a, if I had a time machine right now, I would get in the time machine, take a book to this guy, hand it to him, give him a freaking pep talk, get back in my time, time machine and come back and finish recording this video. Because this is entirely not the way to look at this at all. You got to be confident and not every approach you make, not every, you know, not every relationship, not every date's going to work out the way you want. Sometimes you'll say no to her. Sometimes she just won't click with you. The chemistry's not there. You don't sit there and dwell on that, man. You don't sit there and just get all mopey and, you know, curl up in a ball on the floor sucking your thumb eating a cupcake. You don't do that. You just move on to the next one because, you know, the way you're... The, just, the, just think about this. Think about it this way. The, the whole kind of approach of the book, It's just to visualize it, Basically, in part one, we say, hey, work on yourself. And it's not just with an eye toward being more attractive to women. It's just in general. Every day, you are doing things to improve yourself, to work towards your goals, to make yourself a better man, to make yourself a better, what we call an asset to your to your family, to your close friends, to, to, everyone, to everyone that you care about. And as part of doing that, as that accumulates day by day, week by week, year by year, you become, you know more confident you accomplish more and you feel that the way you talk the way you carry yourself the way you uh, treat others people will see that and they'll be drawn to you they'll feel your energy and be drawn into you that's the first step then this the the, the book has because it's about flirting and dating and meeting women you know successfully there's 10 rules that we tack on to that for the specialized case of, of you being this great guy who may need a little, a few more tools in the toolbox to be more successful with women. So we have 10 rules to help guide your thinking specifically for that problem domain, if you will. If you forgive me my, my, my way of phrasing that. 10 rules on how to think about that so you can be more successful there and not make common mistakes. And, you know, every guy's different. Everybody's different. So when it comes down to being that full, complete, holistic great man who is fine by himself you may have just a few things to do maybe you got nothing to do maybe you have whole parts of your personality that you need to bulldoze down to the ground and rebuild just for you for your own happiness for your own satisfaction with life 
you're this great guy who's totally fine by himself. And when you see a lady that you're interested in, you're offering her an opportunity to spend time with you to, you know, so you can enjoy each other and learn about each other and, and see where that goes. Um, but if she doesn't want any part of that, you're perfectly fine with it because, you know, 10 minutes later, you'll see somebody else good too. And you'll just move, move right along. Don't, don't dwell on that. So I couldn't, I couldn't disagree more with the sentiment behind this card. The whole thing, I just don't like it. All right, that felt like a good place to stop. I hope everyone enjoyed going through that material and the commentary. Thinking back through everything that we t just discussed, things are a lot better now than they were back then. Uh, I guess, you know, your day-to-day -day situation when it comes to approaching women of interest and dating and relationships and marriage uh, depends on where you live. Uh, but I think that things are much easier now. Things have improved. You have the advent of the internet as well, too, to help you, in, in principle, in theory anyway, seek out more women. But, you know, again, they're like we talk about in the book, the, it's the, the women's inboxes are just more crowded. The younger and prettier they are, you know, I'm sorry to say it that way, but the younger the pretty and prettier they are, the more full their inboxes are and the more work you got to put in to go and stand out with how you create your profile and what you say there, how you introduce yourself. We go over all that in the book. Same way for meeting people on in, in person. Uh, same deal. It's uh, this social norms uh, have relaxed quite a bit in the years since then and now. So it's a lot easier to do that. But there's rules to that um, game. And I think one thing that is definitely the same between then and now, when I think about it, and I can't prove it, but it's just my perception is that being excellent, being a complete man, being a confident person, genuinely confident, someone who, you know, that the woman, when she, she, she can sense, uh, and she, and, and as she learns more and more about you, she reinforces that belief that you're the kind of person that means what you say, that you're a good provider, that you're, you're, that you're protector, that, you're a good person to start a family with. You're someone that her that her friends and her family will like. You're you're a good business person. You're a good worker. You're a good earner. You're good at all those things. And um, the and she that's something that she wants to sign up for. She wants to be a part of that. So um, I look forward to the release of the book, so you guys can see uh, you know kind of what I've put together for you to uh, to to help out. And um, that's all I have for you this week. I'll talk to you next week. Take care. Bye.